Hallo. Hallo. I speak the English. Hello. Hello. It's about Faulty Towers. Hi, it's me. I'm back and I'm re-recording a thing that I actually recorded uh, yesterday, only there were some problems with it, so it was sort of an aborted take. Uh, anyways, let's get to that. This is about uh, uh, AI and cybersecurity. I mentioned it a little bit in my previous episode of uh, Cyber Security start, uh, Starter Kit. Uh, uh, what is it? Episode 2. So refer to that. Anyways, uh, in my aborted uh, opening take, I had uh, gone off on a quick digression about this article, Google brings generative AI to security. And it is not picking on this article. This article is fine. It's by Kyle Wiggers. It came out uh, on the 24th. It was, I mean, it was, I, it was yesterday. I think it was two days ago, maybe. So anyways, um, this is uh, by Kyle Wiggers at TechCrunch. Google brings generative AI to security. And uh, I wanted to discuss this in and AI in security in general, as mentioned, previously mentioned elsewhere. Uh, I've been into um, machine, really actually, I'm less into large language models, which is the, all the hip new thing with chat GPT and stuff like that right now. I've actually been more into evolutionary computing genetic algorithms and uh, specifically with applications to robotics and security and stuff like that. But anyways, and also adversarial machine learning, which I'm about to introduce to you now, let's get to this article uh, from TechCrunch 2023, uh, April 24th, by Kyle Wiggers. Um, I'll, I'll read a couple of excerpts. Uh, here's the intro. There's a new trend emerging in the generative AI space, generative AI for cybersecurity. And Google is among those looking to get in on the ground floor and some stuff about RSA. Uh, they say that they're introducing cloud security AI workbench, a cybersecurity suite pa uh, powered by a specialized air quotes, security AI language model. I don't know why they put air quotes around security uh, called SecPalm, uh, which in my opinion is not a great name. Anyways, it's an offshoot of Google's Palm model. Uh, it sounds like a failure uh, and it's fine tuned for, uh, for security cases, Google says, incorporating security intelligence such as research on software vulnerabilities, malware, threat indicators and behavioral threat actor profiles. So the same kind of stuff you get from like record your record feature, uh, future subscription or what is it, Dark Trace. Uh, a lot of different companies now provide this sort of uh, visibility, uh, security intelligence or bundle it into their, into their products. Um, well, let's see, down here there was a bit about, okay, um, actually, they do mention that uh, Google purchased Mandiant in uh, 2022, and that was a fantastic uh, deal for both parties, in my opinion. But it says right here, another Google property will use, these will all, you know, their combined technologies that they've acquired over the past couple of years will use SecPalm to help subscribers analyze and explain the behavior of malicious scripts. Um, that I could see being of some value and that's where perhaps maybe the most relevant new functionality comes into this um, in terms of the application of large language models specifically uh, to cyber security. Uh, there's a thing in here where it says, um, do, 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 that's whole music. Um, including, uh, there we go, um, will assist customers uh, in searching security events and interacting conversationally with the results. So that's your chat GPT interface to a large language model thing. Um, uh, security command center AI, meanwhile, will get human readable explanations. I think this is the important part. Human readable, so the core of this article regards human readable explanations of attack exposure courtesy of SecPalm, including impacted assets, recommended mitigations and risk summaries for security compliance and privacy findings. Uh, what I wanted to point out here is at this current moment in 2023, in April of 2023, uh, we, we, with the exception of possible exception of this rather subjective phrase, human readable, we have all this right now. So like we've had this for years. Uh, okay, an explanation of attack surface, uh, uh, your attack surface exposure to um, what's happening in the risk landscape. So vulnerabilities come out uh, that are applicable to systems that you're running inside your company. And Rapid7, for instance, has agents running on all of those 
all of the computers in your company so they know, you know, what the relevance of those vulnerabilities and of, you know, currently trending attacks will be to those systems. We have that right now. Uh, I'm, I guess the human readable part is what is being introduced here by way of large language model um, or large language models. So I, I mean, I'm questioning, you know, really the value of this. I mean, this kind of looks like, you know, Google as, as one would, you know, kind of putting their foot in the door to make sure that they have a, a foot in the game of this, you know, kind of like saying, oh, well, we're not really sure where this is going right now, but for now, let's feed what we already have into large language models and see if we can make them air quotes, human readable. Uh, I mean, like uh, my, my last boss was mostly human. My most recent boss was mostly human and, and he was, you know, capable of readable uh, these things, these sorts of things. So I don't know, maybe they're talking about people who don't understand these things. But to me, the uh, use case is still questionable because unless at the bottom of this explanation, there's a button that says just fix it, which I see kind of might be kind of infeasible at this time. Um, I mean, this is really going to be a matter of how deep the penetration uh, into your assets and your architecture uh, are these agents, uh, assumedly, which will be collecting all of this, this data. Now, there's another note. There's a footnote at the bottom of this. It does say, after all, AI language models, no matter how cutting edge, make mistakes. This is probably the most useful thing in this entire uh, take right here. And they're susceptible to attacks like prompt injection, as I mentioned in my, I said before, previously aborted take. Um, so this is like a currently uh, hip thing to be looking at. And if you ask people right now about cybersecurity or AI relevance to cybersecurity, they may be mentioning this, at least from a black or gray hat perspective. And I'm, this isn't really, in my opinion, the, the phrase injection has a fairly specific application in cybersecurity, and it doesn't mean what prompt injection means, because when we say injection in cybersecurity, we're usually talking about the ability to deliver some sort of payload uh, that does uh, uh, like precisely what I want and does things really that the engine is not even, doesn't even do. Like, uh, you know, if you're interesting, interacting with a shopping cart and you use that capability to contact some internal servers and retrieve administrative details or something like that. Now, that's not what we're talking about with prompt injection. We're talking about bypassing uh, safeguards that have been placed on really the front end interface of these systems that interact with large language models. So there are two topics mentioned in here. One is uh, human readable, whatever the hell that means, uh, human readable explanations of attack exposure. And the other one is prompt injection. The point I wanted to make here is I, in my opinion, and as I said, I have some background in this, although I'm not a data scientist or machine learning scientist, uh, but I've been following this. Ask anybody who knows me, <laughs> they're sick of hearing me talk about this for about the last 12 years. Um, so anyways, what I think is of interest to cybersecurity people and I think will be the future of cybersecurity as it relates to emerging AI technologies is what they call uh, ML po machine learning poisoning attacks and uh, adversarial machine, machine learning. Um, here is an example of an article from 2019 called Poisoning Attacks on Machine Learning. Um, and this talks about feeding, let's say, let's call it malformed uh, training data um, to large language models and machine learning systems such that their behavior is subtly modified in a way that is not immediately obvious, but also can be used to achieve goals that you have specifically in mind. So to do, in other words, to trick the system into doing what you want it to do instead of what it is programmed to do. What does that sound like to you? Yeah, that's what you and I have been doing for decades. This is what we all always do. Um, and there's some math background here and they talk about Tay uh, it, like for instance, they use this as an example and Tay is not a direct example of this. Um, but Tay was taking its training data from in real time from the real world and, you know, became trained uh, to be a uh, Nazi by basically being told Nazi sort of material. That's not exactly what we're talking about here, but it's a good way to introduce it. Um, what they're really talking about is uh, subtly crafted so again, I mean, you start. You should by now be recognizing some of this. So this is what we do. We we take HTTP transactions, for instance, and uh, and subtly craft them in a way that is malicious. So uh, 
you know, um, in order to get it to do something that it is not supposed to do, but also in such a way that it appears normal. So like an SQL injection, it, you know, appears it in fact, and in fact is a valid SQL query. I mean, otherwise it wouldn't work. Uh, in most cases, that's the scenario we're talking about. Applications, for instance, right? So say that you, uh, there is a uh, stock trading firm that uses large language models uh, and these sorts of trained networks to, you know, predict buys or something like that, right? And it takes new data and it's being trained by new data that it acquires. Say you have the opportunity to introduce um, data to this stream in such a manner that there is nothing malformed directly about the data, but over time you are able to introduce um, subtle, I'm going to call it perceptions, and I'm not talking about consciousness. Let's not get into that discussion yet, but uh, subtle subtleties of the model in such a way that they can be exploited later. So to go back to the stock trading firm example, say if you had an opportunity to present it with training data that uh, led to it behaving in observably normal uh, man in an observable, observably normal manner in most in pretty in every single circumstance, so there would be no way to recognize that there was anything amiss here, uh, and this is what hacking has always been about, right? It should look like normal transactions, um, but it has it has trained the network. This training data that you've introduced has trained the network in such a way that's very subtle. For instance, it on any normal trading day, it behaves uh, on you know as it ordinarily would, but on like one day a year. You know, it over evaluates one particular uh, stock. And again, because right now there's a big, there's a big, uh, you know, um, conversation in the in machine intelligence fields and machine learning fields about explainability, particularly about large language models, because explaining how they work is a real problem. Uh, it looks, you know, inside, air quotes, looks, I mean, if you were to derive the data structures inside, looks a lot like this sort of thing, only many, many, many times more complicated. So it is not obvious uh, on inspection why a model is giving the answer that it is given. This has been a real problem since the beginning. Um, and so adversarial machine learning is simply the technique of leveraging this subtlety of how machine learning models work uh, to your advantage to mistrain them but mistrain them in such a way that they are not necessarily, that that mistraining is uh, not necessarily obvious. And I believe this is really the, you know, where the meat and potatoes of future cybersecurity is going to be with regards to machine learning. Um, because that's really where the big losses and therefore the big payoffs, depending upon what color hat you wear, um, are, going to be, uh, are going to be found. You know, prompt injection is interesting, but that's just a matter of further safeguards on the front end. Uh, this is about poisoning the model itself and getting it to do things that it's not supposed to be doing. And I'm talking things it's really not supposed to be doing, like, not like it's not supposed to answer questions about, you know, making explosives. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, it, you know, misinterprets a, tra a stock trading scenario uh, in a manner that benefits you or is just hilarious because we like to do that. That's what hackers do. Anyways, uh, this is a machine uh, poisoning attacks on machine learning. This is a pretty good one. Another one uh, I would recommend as an introduction to this, maybe not an introduction because there's a lot of math, is the 2013 paper evasion attacks against machine learning at test time, uh, an academic article from the University of Tubingen, Tubing, 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 Sorry, Tumbeginians, I don't know how to pronounce your uh, home's name. Uh, and so this is this will go into the math of it, you know, for you people who can read this stuff. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I really uh, usually tend to need to understand at a higher, at a higher level. Um, this is good stuff. Uh, this is good stuff, too. So anyways, my point was that is where I think the meat and potatoes of cybersecurity research as it relates to machine learning and AI are for the moment. In terms of like how these systems may help us, uh, I was actually, I'm actually more interested in, um, in machine learning systems that will do the same things that hackers do 
I think they could be pretty good at that. Uh, so that would be cool to have to be able to let loose a bunch of bots to um, attack your new application and maybe help you ferret out where you should focus more attention. Um, so that stuff will be interesting. This other stuff, I think this is them just kind of, you know, uh, reserving a space at the table so that they'll they'll have a foot in the game. No, you have a hand in the game. You have a, you have a horse in the race, a hand in the game, and a foot in the door. So they want all three of those, um, and this is a, this is their way of setting that out at the time. Anyways, look up adversarial machine learning. There's also uh, I might link it in the YouTube doodly do, which is where these videos end up to a couple of good um, interviews and conversations uh, like for, with people like Lex Fridman uh, who have discussed this topic at length with experts. Anyways, that's it for this brief video. Thanks a lot for tuning into that. And if you like this stuff, you should go to youtube.com slash unhacker and uh, go take a look at the cybersecurity startup kit and other content. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, as we say around here, if you like it, tell your friends, and if you don't, tell your enemies. Good day.